Hello everyone and in today's video we'll be setting up our interaction input and also getting started with making a interaction blueprint hierarchy which uh, we'll go into a bit more in the video but uh, yeah so to start up with our interact we're going to make it so that to interact with something we'll attach it to a button press so the first thing we're going to do is go to edit project settings and we'll assign a new input Now I've already done it here, so all you do is press plus, call it interact, and then in here there's every possible input we can put. So I just found the E key. Just right, right here. Brilliant. And now with that, we also we're gonna need something that we can interact to. So, the first thing we're going to make is our master interact. And it's called a master interact because we're able to make a child of the blueprint class that then any information that we make in the master carries on down to its children. So we'll make an interact event and then every child blueprint we make from that can call that interact event. So. Let's make a blueprint. Our master interact. And then hit in here. First, we want to clean up. Add a scene and call it root. And then just drag it over the top. And all that we need to do is create a custom event called interact. And that's all we're ever going to need for this blueprint. Just this event. And so now if we minimize that, we're, we're going to make up a little test. So if we right click at the top, we have this create child blueprint class. So master interact child one, and then we create another child blueprint class and call it two. And in here, it's real quick, we're gonna add a cube. And if you see now, if we type in event interact, we can now call on that event that we've just made in the master and just click quick test purposes. Well, and this one will just say I am child one, and that's two. And we'll just copy that. And then in child two, we'll make a sphere. And in the event graph, we'll just do the same thing. Paste that print string from before. And then we have two children of our master interact that both have a different line of code plugged into what would be the same event. But now we actually need the a way of calling this. So first thing we'll do is we'll put both our children into the world. And from there, we'll open our master interact. So, so if we just type in input, or if we just type in interact, actually, yeah, in our actions ends, we can call on this. 
And what we want to do, we want to make a sphere trace. A sphere trace by channel. And if we just copy this bit of code from our climate system, or if you're just following from scratch, copy this. And we'll plug it into the start and the end. With and we'll change this to 100. I will change this to about 80. And also, let's make this about 80. And then, really, oh, we've made a multi sphere. We only want to make just a single. There we go. Also remember to plug it into the start and the end. It will make radius of about 80. We're going to draw it for duration, which will be 5 seconds by default. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break this hit result. And we're going to try and cast to our BP master interact. So, and then I'm going to cast to our master interact and plug in our hit actor. And so, what basically this is doing is that every time we fire our trace, if We've hit an actor that is our master interact, we can proceed. And from there, we can call that interact event. And because of the way that the parent child system works, just all just calling this master interact will work for any any of its children. So Give that a little try. Yeah, as you can see, might need to be a little bit larger to be fair. But at the top, we see I am child one and I am child two. So now, any object that we can make, we want to make interactable, we will now make as a child of our master interact so that we can call on it from our interact, interaction input and get it to do whatever bit of code we want. And with that, we'll get on to the next part. Okay, so while doing my recordings, I've added, decided to add another section to our, to this interaction video where we're actually here, I've made a animation for when we do an interaction where it just pushes forward. And as well as that, if we see in our content browser, there's a whole new file where I basically just retargeted all our animations to the UE4 mannequin. And then, and now we're using this instead. And that's just because when we're putting our character mesh on top of this skeleton, it seems to fit a lot better and causes a lot less issues because um, like when I was making this animation to just even make it slightly work I had to put this arm in the body whereas going forward I w we won't need to do that so all of these files will be in the description and then all you'll need to do is plug it into your character blueprint and then just change all the references that are in there and there we go just to show you so first up here we want to cast now cast to the APB underscore UE4 and then just you'll just have to go around and 
So, yeah, oh, also, this variable will have to change to APBUE4, which will kind of like break all your references, and you'll just have to pull out for them and do them again. But it's, it's really quick. And then another thing that I've done is I found that this, only doing this check on hard landing makes things a little bit difficult for us. So we're now going to do it attached to our IK. Right, and with that, let's close all these. I'll just close the whole thing. We'll start again. Right now. So, in our new folder, we now have this interactive end. It isn't perfect, but when we attach it to our character, it looks a lot better. And we're going to need to make a montage out of this. So yeah, just A on score interact montage, that's fine. And because we wanna now whenever we're doing a montage, we want to block our movement. Yeah. Oh here we go. So drag this to the end. And there we go. And now they usually with an animation like this we don't really need to disable the our cable because we're using it to block off our movement, it works. And now we're going to go into our animation blueprint. Go to our event graph. And now we'll always get this error. But it doesn't actually do anything or cause any issues. So it's fine. I want to move all this out of the way. No, a new custom event. Um, let's call it interact. interact animation and we're using this as a custom event we may in the future have the ability to make more specific animations for our interactions if we we're able to when we do the trace we can find out what type of interaction we're doing but for now just a montage will do okay so plug our interact montage in and we're doing all the IK stuff inside the animation so that should be fine. Okay, now all we need to do now is get our anim graph. Pull out that interact animation. And there we go. So, so as we can see from the start, the running animation is much better. But now, I will only do it when we hit, won't it? So, spoilers for the next episode, but this is the door that we're going to create and granted it's going to go up right now that's just because we've got some settings on it changed oh it didn't play i know why stupid mistake compile Let's just say even if we fail do the animation, just so we can Yeah, 
Yeah. It's more like it. And say if we really wanted. So we had that door moving. And it's on our door. Um, no. Change that. Obviously, this won't be exact, but if we were to put a delay, that would just maybe match up with our interaction. I think it's probably around a second in. Might have been two seconds. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit smoother. And now we have a animation to do our interact with. Right, and with that we can get on to actually making that door now. Right, and so with that we'll see you next time.